Hey, good evening. This is David Knapp. I'm going to be sharing a real basic midge pattern with you. There's plenty of other tutorials out there on how to tie this fly, so it's nothing new or special, but um, it's one of the best flies you can fish here on our tailwaters here in Tennessee, so I figured I better make sure everyone was tying this fly and fishing it because it will catch you a lot of fish. Um, you see I just started my thread right there behind the bead, secured it. I'm using a just a basic olive uni thread and olive uh, ADOP. You can use uh, Vivas. I also use a lot of Vivas thread, especially in the small sizes for tying midges. Um, tying this one a little bit bigger just so it shows up good in the video like we often do when we're tying tiny stuff. This is a 16, but typically I'm going to tie this fly in a 18 or even a little bit smaller. And I use a Tiemco 2487 for pretty much all my midge tying. Um, the other thing you're going to need for this fly other than thread and a hook and a bead is small copper wire. And it's just copper ultra wire. I use one and a half millimeter beads on my smaller flies, 18 and down. And this one I'm using a two millimeter just because it's a little bit of a bigger hook since it's a 16. So got the thread secured, ready to roll. And we're going to tie this fly and talk just a little bit about how we like to fish it. I'm using some wire here on the bottom of the hook and gonna secure it right there and I'm gonna keep that wire on the bottom so that I'm not getting a weird angles built into my fly as much as possible wrapping just a real consistent smooth taper I like this fly under a dry fly as a dry dropper more than anything but it also works really well in a nymph rig in the Smokies I'll fish it in the winter in particular uh, a lot of times there's nothing really hatching except maybe some midges, maybe some little black stoneflies. And um, in the winter, if the fish aren't really doing much. Try dragging one of these behind whatever else you're going to fish. And you'll be surprised how many fish you'll pack, pick up on it in the mountains, even though we don't typically associate the mountains with midge fishing. There's plenty of midges there. We just typically fish bigger bugs because the bigger bugs are there also. On the tailwaters, on the other hand, the midges are the primary food source for a lot of the fish. And... You'll catch a lot more fish there if you are fishing midges and fishing them effectively and correctly. Um, you can see I've kind of just barely built up this front half or quarter or third of that um, body just a little bit to create a nice taper. Uh, I'm going to take the wire. I use my rotary feature a lot on this vise, but when I'm wrapping wire for a zebra midge, I feel like I get a much better consistent wrap with spacing in particular by just wrapping it the old-fashioned way keeping the hook stationary and coming around with that wire that's just me I'm sure there's plenty of other people that would have a different opinion on how to do that but that's the way I do it probably because I learned and tied on a hook for many or a vice for many years that was not a rotary vice I'm gonna clip that wire with my old scissors and I'm going to take that butt end of wire and just kind of push it in with my thumbnail so it kind of gets out of the way. Build up that head just a little bit behind that bead. And we're going to half hitch to secure everything. That's pretty good. I don't know if we really need to whip finish, but we will. looks pretty good right there and we'll catch some fish one thing I really like doing with my zebra midges um, is finishing them with something beyond just a a uh, thread head finish um, I like a little glue of some sort and as I've mentioned in other other videos Sally Hansen's hard as nails is is really nice you can also use some UV finish of some sort if you want doesn't really matter the effects more or less going to be the same I'm just going to use a little bit of Sally Hansen's on this particular one and the reason I do this if you reinforce this fly it'll catch a lot more fish 
than if you don't. If you don't give it just a little finish, the little small teeth of bigger trout are going to get in there between those wire ribs and start chewing on that thread and before you know it the whole fly looks fuzzy and right there with that little bit of finish it'll do a lot better if you let that dry and put another layer on there it's just that much better so you can decide how much time or effort you want to put into finishing a fly so that it's bomb proof. I usually just go one layer and call it good. I'm going through enough of these flies anyway. The last thing you want to do is spend 10 minutes on a fly that should take 30 seconds and then, you know, bust it off since you're fishing 6x in the first five minutes that you fish it and have to tie on a new fly anyway. So, um, anyway, so like I said, fish this fly under a dry fly as a dry dropper, um, sight fish to obviously midging fish and you, you can tell they're midging because those fish will be um, porpoising though they look like they're rising if you don't really pay real close attention it looks like they're feeding on the surface and what's actually happening is they're intercepting midge pupa that are drifting in the current under the surface and the fish's momentum will cause them often to break the surface but if you watch closely the head's never coming out of the water um, of the fish as it feeds it's actually the dorsal fin or, or more likely the tail that's breaking the surface as that fish comes up, intercepts a midge pupa somewhere under the surface, and then turns, and that momentum, it that tail just will pop out of the water. So um, anytime you see that, fish this fly, and good luck. Hope it catches as many fish for you as it has for me.